hi guys and welcome to python tutorial of a stopwatch so as you can see it's a stopwatch if i click on stop there we go we can always resume or reset and start it all over so what i am going to do now is i'm going to take you guys straight into visual studio development environment and we put one of these together so let's exit out we are actually using VS Studio, so I'm going to click on here. Let's start a new file. So I'm just going to enter in there Python. There we go. Start a new Python project, and I'm going to save that as top wash. Let's add two to it and click on file. There we go. Now I'm going to start by first of all, let's import as follows from Tickintel. Let's import it all. There we go. Now, because I'm going to be using the timer, so I'm going to import the timer as well. So let's just enter time in there. Now, I will be creating two class. So the first one is going to be called stop. watch or we can just call it timer stopwatch yeah timer stopwatch there we go all right so let's enter column in there now i'm going to start by first of all declaring my function so let's say in it initialize and what we're initializing is the self and enter a semicolon in there. Now, the next thing is I'm going to let's say since it's going to be inside the start, we say uh, we say self dot start. Let's do that again. Start timer. And I'm going to say equals nothing. And I'm going to say self. Press enter there. Self dot run timer. And that will be equals false. Then the next thing is I'm going to now say self, press enter, self dot ellipse timer. That is going to be equal zero. Okay, guys, I'm going to define the following function that I will use to start my operation. So that is the start function. And the next one is going to be for the stop. So I can just copy this and change it around as well to so come right down here. And paste that right in there. So I'm just going to change the true here. I'm going to change that to false. And here I'm going to change this to the elapsed timer. So paste that in there there we go and let's change the function name to stop now the next thing that I'm going to do is right underneath well, here I'm going to create another function and this is going to be called reset and the resets we have to reset this timer this start Copy that. Copy all of that and bring it right here. That will be my reset function. And next is for us to update the stopwatch for the timer. So let's come right in here and that is for updates. So let's just collapse this so that you guys can see that. 
Now after that, we then need to create another class, just like we have up here. That would be for the application. So we can come right down here and just create another class. We call that we call that app. There we go. So with that creator, we need to get it initialized with some data. So I'm going to copy all of these. Just bring it right down here. Paste that in there. So first of all, I'm going to ssf dot root, and that is going to be equals root as well. And now let's give it a title. Let's enter. And the title is going to be we might as well just say set dot title for the root. Let's bring that in there. Set dot title that is going to be known as stopwatch. Yeah, that's fine. That is the title. Now after that, let's Specify the geometry. The geometry in this case, let's say dot geometry, and that is going to be. I'm going to specify that as 1140 by 600 plus 100 plus 50. That is my coordinate. Now, I'm going to then configure the route itself. So let's go for self dot root. Come right down here. Self dot root dot configure. Configure that would be for the background, and I'm just gonna call that BG. That would be equals. Let's say cadet blue. There we go. Okay, let's create one variable. Then that very variable, I would then use it to call the main function. So right underneath, maybe right underneath the title, I'm going to say self dot. I'll call that stop wash. That would be equals whatever the name of my class is up here let's copy that bring it down here and paste it right there and enter parenthesis okay now that is done I'm going to try out my application now I just want to see how it's going to respond so I'm going to say root equals TK and let's say the app itself is known as app then we have root in the parentheses and let's just say root dot main loop there we go so I'm going to try that out just want to see how that's going to work so let's come in here start the bug I should have the screen if it works right let's minimize this I want to see the app itself Okay, let's run it again. I'm just going to come in here, click on run. I just want to see the the framework. There we go. All right, that's good. Now, underneath here, I'm just going to now create my widget. The very first widget that I'm going to create will be for the title and so on. So. But first of all, let's create the following. So I'm going to call that, uh, we can just call it roots or frame roots. That's a frame root. The frame root will be equals root. And it's going to be a child of roots, comma. And the color is going to be cadet blue uh, let's say BG color I think I have it in here somewhere I 
know what I'm just gonna type that out uh, let's go for oh let's accept this why not just want to see how that's gonna work it's going to be equals cadet blue there just want to see how that's gonna work that's fine that is for my frame and here let let's get it parted get it parted y axis make that too and for the x axis I'm gonna make that about 40 then I am going to add a border of about 20 and let's get it relief that is going to be rigged there we go grab hold of it and underneath here I'm just going to round up my root come in here let's say root dot grid that is going to be let's set it as roll that will be equals zero and the column that is going to be equals zero as well there okay so i'm going to take this off it's meant to be bg yeah bg color that is for my frame and underneath here I'm gonna create another one for my another widget for the title and that is going to be using the label that is the widget and this is going to be a child of the frame roots there paste that in there and there that is my title so let's see if this is going to work so i'm going to just try it out i just want to see if the title will work as expected there we go that's not bad okay that's good now title is taken care of now let's come right down here i'm going to create some other frame so let's just pick that up. I'm gonna copy this and just change it around. Paste it underneath here. I'm gonna be changing it around anyway. Let's change the name. The name of this will become main frame. Main frame. I repeat the same thing for the other one here. Main frame is also gonna be a child of the roots but it's going to be right underneath the so let's paste that in here there and in the case of the main frame I'm going to add a pattern here I'm going to make the size about 30 to the x axis and just make it about 30 there and what else I'm going to add the heights, but first of all, let, let's just add the the width and the height. So I'm going to come in here and say width that is going to be about 900. Height, we make that about maybe 600 or 500 let's say 5 for now and get rid of these and these as well and what else should I do yep. I'll just run it let me run it and see how that's gonna look like then I'll take it from there there that's how it's looking not too bad that's good alright so I'm just gonna speed that up let's copy that I need two more frames that are going to be in here this one is going to be known as a top and this will be top as well let's get it indented 
and the next one will be the down frame or oh, main frame down and enter down here as well both frames will be a child of the main frame copy this and paste it right here and this one too if they are child of the main frame then this one this top frame will be zero here and this will be in column one so that is fine so I'm just gonna tidy it up and I'll get back to you guys shortly let's see right okay let's change one or two things here I want to get rid of the rig here I don't want it to show this one's let's reduce this to one and one I'm gonna run it leave this rig for now I will get rid of it when I want so let's see just gonna run it and see how that's gonna look like go to yeah let's run it and see there we go that's how it's looking now so you see this one in the middle that's where I want my display the timer to display so I'm gonna exit out so let's just close this and I'm gonna get rid of this I don't want that to show yeah that's fine so let's run it again there we go that's fine now close that we now need to create our widget so come right down here the widget that would be child of all of this so first of all I'm gonna copy this and change it around paste it right there that would be for the display okay guys I've included the buttons as well let's bring this down okay I've included the buttons as well I think I'm going to reduce the size so that you guys can see the code properly let's come into the fonts make it about 18 yep all right that's much better you can see everything now all right so I've created the that is going to be my title that's where my stopwatch will be displayed and in here these are the three buttons the start button the stop button and the reset button so let me run it and see let's see how that's going to work there we go look at that apart from here we just need to take care of that all right or maybe I should increase the maybe I should increase this to 22 and see how that's gonna you know, look like let me run it now I've increased the border run it again to run let's see how that's gonna you know, look like yep 22 is almost there I may have to add a little bit more okay then now we just need to create the function that we will call I'm gonna create three of those that's that's it 26 is almost there that is good I will set for 28 and let's create these functions now so right underneath here I'm gonna create the following functions the first one I'm gonna call that let's say Okay, instead of reinventing the wheel let's just copy all of these functions in here and just delete the content in there copy those ones bring them right down here let's make sure I'm in the right yeah that should be here paste and get rid of everything we have in there delete it all delete delete and delete and delete and delete this one as well okay so their names let's call that stats 
start time timer so the next one is going to be stop timer stop timer and this one is going to be called reset timer and here I'm going to call that update timer all right okay and in here I'm going to start by saying now declare one variable I'll call that stop stopwatch dots let it call the start function of the enter parenthesis so that's one taken care of and I'm gonna call this update update timer I'm gonna be using that later on there we go enter parenthesis so that's taken care of then this top here I'm gonna use it underneath here to stop the timer so come in here and just say stop so the function is going to be stop. I already have the function called stop right up here. There we go. That is it. Okay. So that is the start. That is the stop. So bring it down. And here we stop. Now the reset. So the reset function. Let's just say reset and update the timer we can call this so this is going to be reset okay and timer then up here, underneath here we now need to call where is it there we go I'm gonna call mine label I mean label dot config and that is going to be whatever text equals self dot stopwatch stopwatch and we also want it to get it updated there we go enter parenthesis in there there then we say self dot root dot after 10 comma self dot update timer there we go I think I am done so all I then need to do now is to call all of this function inside my button. So let's come in here. I'm going to call the first one here. Let's say call my command. That would be equals self dot reset. That is for the reset. Reset underscore timer actually I call it underscore timer there that is my very first one the second one is going to be let's copy this that's for the stop place that's right underneath there and I'm gonna call that stop timer this one paste all right now the next one here the last one will be for this start copy all of that and just paste that here I'm going to call that start timer there we go okay so those are the buttons taken care of I've used the command to call all of these functions here I'm now going to just try it out and let's see there we go and stop the stop is now working 
reset works start stop not working let's check the function drop that down oh come on let me go right up here and see because this function is correct so let's go up here the oh this is wrong that was supposed to call the the start here start timer I'm gonna copy that and just there we go okay correction made have a good look at that so I am going to run it and let's see how that's gonna look like let's have a good look at the lines of code first then I'll run it there we go alright so let's run it and see as a correction made again run there we go there is working as we want reset start all over there and this is how you create your own stopwatch using visual studio and guys please do subscribe to my channel and i'll be very pleased if you can join this channel as well this is my second channel i hope you guys enjoyed but just before i go i'm going to show you guys the lines of code again take it from the top where i've called the following so let's bring it down all that those are all the declared functions bring it right here the second class that was created I created my interface and the frameworks the widgets starting from here the function that call every single that I use the button to call to run the stopwatch and that's all there is to it so guys I'm gonna call it the end of this tutorial I suppose you all enjoy it subscribe to my channel and you can also join to become a member of the channel you all have a nice day now bye for now